Hey everyone and welcome back to this series of videos on static timing analysis concepts. In this video, we will try to understand what are timing arcs in STA and how important it is in delay calculation. So without wasting time, let's head straight to the topic. So what is timing arc? A timing arc is a segment or a component of a timing path that may contribute to the delay in signal propagation along the path. So it is a part of the timing path. So we can split an entire timing path into different segments called as timing arcs, be it cell timing arcs or net timing arcs. We will see the different types of timing arcs later. And also the timing arc specifies the timing relationships between the pins of logic elements. It need not be related to the delay of the timing path. It may be related to the soft attribute, such as the relationship between the pins of the logic element itself. For example, it may be the relationship between the inputs itself. Take, for example, an XOR gate. The output depends on both of the inputs, right? Or you can take an example of a deep flip flop, where the relationship between the clock and the D input is very important. So as you can see in this figure, I have shown all the different types of timing arcs in a path. So this path is actually a register to register path. So where we call the registers are flip flops. So this arrow I'm showing here from this input one to this input pin of this AND gate is one timing arc. And the input of this AND gate to the output of this AND gate is another timing arc. A single cell with multiple inputs will have multiple timing arcs because this is a possible propagation path of the signal and remember that each of these paths may have different delay associated with it so any timing information which influences the timing path is provided to sta through this timing arc so this timing arc information is essential for STA to calculate the delay along this path. It should know how the signal propagates and whether it's rising or falling and all these information to calculate the total delay through that path and the worst delay in that path. So there are two major types of timing arcs. One is called as delay arcs. So these delay arcs are used for calculation of delay through the path. For example, take cell delay and net delay. For calculating cell delay, we use cell delay arc. For calculating net delay, we use net delay arc. The second type of arc is called as constraint arc. And this constraint arc is used to find the relationship between the different types of pins of a cell. We'll see more details about these arcs in the upcoming slides. Each cell can have multiple delay and constraint arc. It is not restricted that we can have only one delay arc for a cell or one constraint arc for a cell. The cell delay arc represents the propagation delay between an input and output pin of a cell. So if we have multiple inputs, it will be defined for multiple pins. Let's take, for example, these three conditions. The first one is a D flip flop. For a D flip flop, the cell delay arc is nothing but starting from this clock ending in this output queue so it's the propagation delay from launch of a data triggered by this clock to the output change this propagation delay is called as the cell delay arc and for a buffer which having input a and output y it's the propagation delay from input a to the output y and we have another example of AND gate where we have two delay arcs which is one from from pin A to pin Y the second one is from pin B to pin Y to see all the conditions of a D flip-flop let's consider this table now we have the pin Q and pin clock over here the Q is the output pin and the related pin is clock where we are launching our data so the output will change only with steps of clock clock will control the output change so we have to consider a lot of different cases whether the output rises or falls the rise time could be different than that of the fall time 
so all these conditions has to be taken so if it is the rise time we need to represent what is the delay for the rise time and we need to consider fall time we need to specify what is the fall time so these two are the slew conditions also called as transition time we can have two more conditions here we can have propagation delay which will propagate a low to high and we can propagate uh, we can have a propagation delay which is a high to low for delay arc of a flip flop these conditions should be specified and these conditions will be specified in the library file called dot liberty file so this will be extracted during delay calculation in static timing analysis and note that there is no delay arc from d input to the output of the flip flop that is because d is not actually controlling the output variations the only input which is controlling the variation in the output is clock to show you how a delay arc could look like this is just an example we can see that the delay arc of an invert so you see that it has the rise time at the output y and it will be a function of both the input slew and the output load y not only rise time but all the conditions the fall time at the output or the fall slew of the output and the propagation delay of low to high and the propagation delay from high to low all these conditions will be take will be listed as lookup tables as you can see these are lookup tables this will be kept in the dot liberty file and as i said depending on the load if the input slew is 10 20 picoseconds and the output load is 2 picofarad and then the rise time will be nothing but 30 picoseconds this will be taken and what if it's not uh, same as that of which is listed in here so for example what if it is 15 picoseconds you can ask me that question if it is 15 picoseconds and if this is 2.2 uh, picofarad or something like that then for this one it will be interpolated there is a term in mathematics called interpolation and for this one if it is out of the table then it will be extrapolated so depending on that the delay will be calculated next is the net delay arc net delay arc represents the delay due to the interconnect it is as simple as that now you see there is an interconnect from this cell and gate to this inverter now there is an interconnect which is connecting the output of this and gate to this inverter so the de delay through that net is basically the net delay arc so we will not have any of these informations in the dot liberty file definitely that is related to the cell delay we can only extract this information out of a extraction tool and during the delay calculation this information also will be used and the last one is constraint arc constraint arcs are only associated with the sequential cells it's not associated with combinational logic and other type of cells only sequential cells be it synchronous or asynchronous it is defined for an input pin or between multiple input pins so between different uh, input pins we will consider a few examples so you can say the setup and hold arcs are examples of constraint arcs defined between input pins of a flip-flop so those are certain constraints or conditions which must be met for the proper functionality of the cells minimum pulse width arc is another example of constraint arc def defined on an input pin of a flip flop and that is for a single input pin now you take an example of the setup and hold violation so setup and hold check or constraints are one example of constraint arc where the data must be ready before the active edge arrival of the clock and that's an example of the constraint arc the relationship between the clock pin and the d input pin the data input pin so let's have a look at what we have learned so far uh, considering our previous figure where we had all the delay arcs represented now i have shown them in different colors as you can see all those are in this pink or purple color are actually net delay arcs all those are in this sky blue color is basic are basically the cell delay arcs and the ones which are in green color are actually the constraint arcs 
I hope you got some better understanding of what is timing arc and what are different types of timing arc and how important it is in delay calculation during static timing analysis. I'll see you in another video. Thanks a lot for watching and bye bye.